Hello friends and enemies. So remember last week when I opened up the Havakaltar Olek Thigar figure and I said that the Grave Ring Olek Thigar would be next? I didn't tell the truth. Or rather, it was true at the time, I just decided to change my mind, because today we are looking at High Warden Slog. I just figured, we just looked at one Olek, we can uh, hold off on the next one until later. Also, it's my birthday! I mean, not when you're watching this, but as I'm recording right now, it is my birthday! And I just wanted to do something big and fun and also quick. I mean, I assume it'll be quick. So far I'm making it less quick by talking constantly. So let's get into it. This is a big boy. It's an ogre-sized figure. I believe that's what the classification is. So this is ogre-sized. I think Kragnar was a uh, brute-sized. He does seem to be about the same size as Kragnar. Kragnar is a little bit more <laughs> svelte, whereas this guy is wide. But as far as mass is concerned, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's look at the box first. Very, very large box. Of course, you need a large box to hold a large slog. Havakal Tarlor on one side. Slog lore on the other side. It sounds like this guy has had a rough go of it. He was injured at a young age. He requires the suit to keep living. The stuff in the suit keeping him alive is manufactured at the space prison he works at. So it's a little bit of a conflict of interest, I would say. Not an ethical space prison uh, scenario, but when are they ever? On the back you get everyone in the wave. So we have looked at everyone except for the Tusk agents and oh, like that guy Grave Ring version and Vorga. So those are the three reviews we're going to have left to do. Ooh, this box is so heavy. On the bottom, information, choking hazard, don't give to children under three. If you give this to children under three, well, I don't know, why would you? So it's hard for me to see, but it looks like Slog has like a Bioshock aesthetic going on, as far as the suit's concerned anyway. But also his face is melting off, um, and that is also kind of a Bioshock thing. But that's more of just the kind of creature he is. He's just a face-melty creature, he can't help that. Oh man, this box is big. Ooh, the smell, the plastic smell. Plastic, the plastic factory smell. He gets a backdrop just like the Sphexians, except larger because he's in a larger box. Once again, beautiful artwork. Oh, he is hefty. So hefty. Double clamshell action accessories in this one, and the main figure in this one. He's so heavy that the clamshell's just like... And he's got some extra protection on the front, so let's crack into this. <laughs> he is very well anchored in here, so this is going to be an undertaking. As a former girl child, I've opened up a lot of Barbies in my day. I've opened up a lot of toys in my day. But this was one of the most difficult ones I've ever opened up. It was in there very solidly, which is good. I mean, you want it to be secure, better safe than sorry. But man, I feel like I almost broke a finger opening it up. I had to get the pliers out <laughs> and even they struggled. But here he is. Yeah, it does it does really remind me of Bioshock, very industrial. Less sci-fi to me, or at least less futuristic sci-fi. He looks like he's a couple decades behind the current technology, <laughs> which would make sense if he's had this uh, suit since he was young. Maybe he hasn't swapped it out or anything. But it's a bit of a steampunk vibe, isn't it? Big Daddy Slog. There are a lot of different mechanics involved here. Canisters for the serum that keeps him alive. He's got some identification marks throughout the uh, suit. Right there, it's got a tusk badge. And that continues on the back with what looks like some kind of fan, or maybe a particle intake, maybe even an exhaust. I don't know. I'm not an expert in alien life support suits, but I do like this undersuit. The jumpsuit underneath is a nice texture, and it's the same type of orange that we saw in Oleg Thigar's outfit. Mine does have a bit of a paint chip here, or maybe just some gray paint from this that got on here. Uh, it's not that bad because he's a little bit weathered throughout, so it doesn't really bother me that that would be there. No part of this man is pristine on his body or his soul. Really cool work on the texture of the skin. He's like a sludge monster or something, isn't he? <laughs> oh, I guess he's like a, a fish sludge person. Is that offensive to fish sludge people? I don't know. Some really interesting morphology. Very gross looking toenails. <laughs> like this guy needs a spa day. Maybe he would be less of a tyrant if he just had a nice a nice trip to the spa. So the dome for his head is a little cloudy, but I actually like that. It gives it kind of a um, condensation vibe, a fogged up vibe, like he's breathing in there and his breath is just cloaking the inside of it. You can also take this off and see his head sculpt. He's not a happy camper. Definitely has um, 
like octopus, creature from the Black Lagoon vibes. He's just not a happy boy. And so he takes that out on everyone around him. Don't do that. Let's take this off to get a better look at it. Yeah, the detail work is astounding. So many different textures. Love this texture on the gill ear area. Unhappy fish mouth. Beautiful work on the eye there. Just like flawless fish man eye. It's very interesting how they did the head. This goes on pretty loose. Makes for some uh, swirlies. You can do all the swirlies you want. And then this part is on a joint. So it can be moved around. Can kind of angle his head a little bit where you want him to be looking. I don't know why I'm doing it that way when you can just grab it by the knob. That's what she said. Um, I said I would stop doing that and then I just have it. So yeah, that's a pretty clever way of doing things. Because otherwise, you don't really get much uh, head movement out of this guy. I dare say you won't get much movement out of him at all because he is a sludge monster. The suit itself has a lot of earth tones that kind of tend to blend together when you're just looking at it at a glance, but when you look closer, it's got a lot going on. A lot of different mechanisms and parts, some really neat textures. You've got some straps here, some corrosion on these canisters, a cute little gauge, a little bit of texture on these hoses. These also will come out. I learned that when I was trying to take him out of the package. Paint is applied really well. I mean, look at these buckles. Are these more? <laughs> Are these more pouches? The Vakultar people have a lot of pouches. I mean, I like pouches too. I carry a lot of stuff with me. All right, what can you do? He's a big boy. He's moving okay on his own so far. I haven't had to heat him up. Pretty good range of movement on that arm. Hefty arm joint. Doesn't move much just because it's very big. Very big and simple elbow. Hinge and rocker on the wrist. What is your torso situation like? Oh, we lost a canister. He's gonna die if we lose the other one. Big twist on the torso. No crunch, at least that I can get. I think the top part and this part are just completely separate. These leg joints are attached to the bottom part. And they're pretty, um, flexible. Get a lot of movement out of those. Knees are stuck in this position, but you do have some movement on the foot back in there. So yeah, be careful of these canisters. They're not hard to put back in, and they're too big to lose really, but if you move it around willy-nilly like I was doing, they will pop out. So yeah, you're not going to get much out of this guy just because he is how he is. He's a big guy with simple articulation. He's very heavy, so it's going to be hard, even though he's got some pretty good movement on the legs, it's going to be hard to uh, balance him if you <laughs> if you want any kind of dynamic movement. That's fine. We didn't really expect any dynamism out of this guy. So he'll come with a few accessories, not that many. We have an alternate head sculpt with a really, like, crazy-looking mouth inside. It's pretty nuts. Not only does he have these sharp teeth, and inside there's this fleshy mass, and then beyond that is a beak. So he is really chewing up his food before he swallows it. Some good paint in there, too. It's really shiny and pretty gross. Yeah, otherwise, pretty much the same. We've got alternate hands that are just fists, just big old fists. Man, he really needs to get his nails did. Just smooth them out a little bit. They look really nice when you do that. I tried to do that before every review. I didn't this time, but I think my nails still look okay. You can hate me if you want, but I have the best looking nails out of any toy reviewer. <laughs> don't, don't hold me to that. I'm sure there are some with nails much nicer than mine. They're only starting to grow out after several years of being alive. He's also got this really cool scanner thing. At first I thought it would be like a scanner for the, um, the prison, like scanning guards, and maybe it is, but there is a diagram of him on the screen. So maybe it's going through the diagnostics of the suit, just making sure all his life support is online. You've got the little, you've got his little logo here. A neat dial. Just a really cool sculpt on that. It comes with this hose. The hose, come back here, can plug in back here, and then you just slip it into his fingies if you can. His uh, fingers are not very rubbery. They're pretty stiff, actually. And so is this um, device. There we go. So that's a pretty cool accessory. I like the way it loops around to the back. 
Otherwise, not much uh, going on with him, but there doesn't need to be. He is the big, he's the big boy, he's the boss. So what you lose as far as articulation and maybe some extra accessories is there in presence, sculpt, paint. Just, he looks really cool. He also looks very unlike the others that we've gotten in this line so far. Just his aesthetic is different. He's a, he's pretty far away from humanoid, even though he's got the standard two legs and two arms, but just the species he is, the way his suit looks, just looks uh, a little bit different than everyone else. And I think that is fine. He is meant to stand out. So wow, this was a really short review. There's just not much more I can go over with him. And unlike the others, he didn't have a bunch of different little bits to attach to him, not like the Sphexians. Sphexians! He doesn't really have any alternate looks. Well, besides the extra head, I guess. One note, I will say, is that this extra head... Oh wow, it fits a lot better than um, this one. This one just kind of... I mean, it doesn't need to stick on there really hardcore. It can still turn and stuff. It's fine. It's not really going to fall off unless you tilt them upside down. But whereas this one... You gotta kind of press it in. I do think I preferred this head. I just like seeing his mouth open. It adds a little, a bit more of a dynamic interest to the face area. Not that the face area isn't already extremely interesting. Look at that. It's pretty crazy. It's just more so. So I like that. But yeah, this looks like a man you would not want to cross. Though I do wonder, maybe he's surrounded by Tusk Guards and Sphexians and stuff. But why don't you just like, whoop rip the serum canisters out of his body, and then uh, he dies. And then you escape. That's what I would do. <laughs> I would probably just cower in my cell, let's be honest. So, thank you so much for watching. Next week, I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> we have another Olek, Vorga, and the three Tusk agents to look at, and then we're done with book one of Favakultar, and I'll be sad, honestly. But then maybe we can set everyone up together and just see how they all look together. It's gonna be cool. So, Likes and subscribes are very much appreciated. Comments are more than welcome, and I'll see you guys on the next one.